Welcome to Dental Notes and Mnemonics. Uh, so today we are going to discuss the erythroplakia. So without any delay, let's get started with the video. First of all, the definition: oral erythroplakia is a red, velvety lesions of the oral mucosa that cannot be diagnosed as any other specific disease. It is often regarded as the oral equivalent of uh, leukoplakia but with the key distinction being its red appearance instead of white if we talk about the incidence of erythroplakia in indian context then it is a relatively rare oral lesion but carries a significant burden due to its high malignant potential it accounts for less than 1% of oral precancerous lesion globally In India its prevalence is estimated to range from 0.02% to 0.2% in population based studies. Erythroplakia is much rarer than leukoplakia which has a prevalence of 0.2 to 4% in India. Erythroplakia uh, predominantly affects individual aged from 40 to 60 years and it is more common in males likely due to higher exposure to risk factors. and india risk factors are tobacco chewing uh, which is a major contributor to erythroplakia incidence areca nut and the betel quid chewing is widely practiced in india particularly in the rural area so the chances of erythroplakia is also more alcohol consumption synergistically increases the risk with tobacco and poor oral hygiene contributes uh, to lesion persistent and further progression Also when we compare the rural and the urban uh, prevalences of erythroplakia then it is having the high prevalence in rural areas due to widespread use of smokeless tobacco and betel quid and states like UP Bihar Tamil Nadu report higher incidence rates due to prevalence of tobacco related habits Regarding the etiology of oral erythroleukoplakia it is influenced by various environmental and genetic factors Smoking both tobacco and cannabis is a significant risk factor for erythroplakia. The toxic chemicals in the smoke can cause irritation and chronic inflammation which increases the risk of malignant transformation. Repeated trauma to the oral mucosa such as ill-fitting dentures, sharp teeth or mechanical irritation can create an environment conducive to development of oral erythroleukoplakia. Also viruses like uh, human papilloma virus are linked to the development of oral cancers and these viruses can induce changes in the cellular level promoting the transformation of uh, normal cells into precancerous or cancerous cells and when the oral mucosa fails to produce enough keratin the tissue becomes more vulnerable to injury and malignancy Insufficient uh, keratinization contributes to the development of smooth red patches characteristic of oral erythroleukoplakia. Also the chronic uh, alcohol consumption particularly when it is combined with the smoking significantly increase the risk of oral mucosal changes. Erythroplakia is due to three main causes. The first one is the loss of keratinization, dysplastic changes and the angiogenesis. In erythroplakia there is thinning of oral uh, epithelium this loss uh, of keratinization exposes the underlying blood vessels making the lesion appear bright and velvety in texture the lesion often shows high grade epithelial dysplasia these abnormal cellular changes characterized by increased cell division and loss of normal architecture One of the defining features of erythroplakia is the increase in vascularity or angiogenesis. Once blood vessel formation contributes to the lesion's red color and may support tumor growth by providing more oxygen and nutrients to the dysplastic cell. Erythroplakia is primarily classified on the basis of histological severity and the degree of dysplasia. On the basis of histological severity, uh, we may categorize erythroplakia on the basis of uh, dysplasia into mild, moderate, and severe dysplasia. And last is the carcinoma in situ and invasive carcinoma in which where the malignant transformation has occurred. 
on the basis of clinical uh, features uh, a homogeneous erythroplakia and the non homogeneous erythroplakia can be classified in the homogeneous erythroplakia smooth velvety red lesion without fissure or ulceration is uh, present while in the non homogeneous erythroplakia uh, it is uh, irregular patchy appearance sometimes ulcerated which has a higher risk of malignant transformation as compared to homogeneous erythroleukoplakia Now coming to the diagnosis of erythroleukoplakia it uh, may be ruled out uh, through the clinical examination adjuvant stay like vital stains uh, toluidin blue can be used uh, for the diagnosis of erythroplakia apart from these uh, we may use the biopsy for the histopathological examination and use of the molecular techniques to detect the mutations erythroplakia appear as fiery red or velvety patch with a smooth or slightly granular surface and uh, there is no keratinization as it is a non white lesion the margins are well defined but may be irregular commonly observed in high risk areas of the oral cavity like floor of the mouth ventral surface of the tongue soft palate and buccal mucosa the size of lesion may vary from a small localized patches to the large diffuse lesions usually uh, these lesions are asymptomatic in most of the cases but discomfort or pain if ulceration or inflammation is present key histological findings are loss of keratinization with atrophic uh, epithelium high grade dysplasia or carcinoma of c2 occurs sub epithelial vascular proliferation can be seen and these features in combination with a clinical examination biopsy provides a definitive diagnosis for erythroplakia toluidin blue is a vital dye that selectively binds to dna and rna especially in tissues with increased nuclear material positive staining in areas of dysplasia or malignancy retain the blue color while the benign areas do not retain the stain and appear clear objective uh, diagnostic markers in the tools for erythroplakia brush biopsy molecular markers which may detect uh, the genetic mutations or abnormal protein expression such as p53 or ki67 mutations in p53 tumor suppressor gene are often seen in erythroplakia particularly in the cases that show dysplasia or malignant transformation an increase in ki67 index indicates high cellular uh, proliferation and it is often associated with the premalignant and malignant cases over expression of cd44 involved in cell adhesion and migration can be seen in erythroplakia so coming to the management part as erythroplakia is a high risk premalignant lesion due to its potential for malignant transformation so effective management requires a multidisciplinary approach including diagnosis treatment follow up and lifestyle changes methods can be classified into local treatment systemic therapies and supportive strategies local treatment is directed at the lesion itself and are the first line option for managing erythroplakia it includes surgical excision which uh, involves the removal of the lesion with a clear margins to completely eliminate the lesion and reduce the risk of reoccurrence and malignant transformation but it requires careful technique to ensure no residual dysplastic tissue remains which may cause reoccurrence laser ablation uh, uses the laser energy to vaporize or coagulate the lesion to precisely remove erythroplakia with minimal bleeding and damage to the surrounding tissue less invasive than the surgery with faster recovery but may not be suitable for larger or deeper lesions another uh, approach is cryotherapy uh, which causes the destruction of the lesion by freezing it with liquid nitrogen to destroy abnormal cell through freezing and subsequent necrosis it may not always achieve clear margins uh, leading to high risk of reoccurrence in the future Uh, another approach is electrocautery where we apply uh, the heat via electric current to burn and remove the lesion to shrink or remove small lesion uh, with controlled coagulation but it is less precise and especially for the larger or deeper lesions therapies address the underlying factors that could predispose to lesion occurrence and malignant transformation 
alcohols, uh, chemo prevention and immunomodulators. In chemo prevention, use of systemic medications such as antioxidant, retinoids and the other agents are given to stabilize the epithelial cells and reduce the reoccurrence uh, or malignancy. They are the adjunctive treatments and should be combined with the local treatment for the optimal effect. Another approach is immunomodulators as these drugs influence the immune system responses such as interferons or other biologics. They modulate the immune activity in the oral mucosa and reduce the dysplastic changes but not widely used and more research is required on their effectiveness for erythroplakia. Supportive strategies help in overall management and follow-up of patients to prevent reoccurrence and manage the risk factors. To ensure that the lesion has been fully treated and to catch any reoccurrence at an early or treatable age. Changes in the lifestyle such as cessation of tobacco, alcohol and the areca nut use should be advised to the patient uh, to remove risk factors that may contribute to lesion uh, reoccurrence or the malignant transformation. Through regular follow-ups, the reoccurrence of erythroplakia can be detected early and appropriate interventions can be made to prevent its progression to cancer. If we talk about the malignant transformation of erythroplakia, then it is uh, one of the most highly risk oral precancerous lesion, its transformation rate to invasive carcinoma ranges from 14 to 50 percent, significantly surpassing other conditions like leukoplakia. Which influence the malignant transformation of erythroplakia is the uh, histological grading, high grade dysplasia, and carcinoma in C2 being most likely to progress. The site of the lesion, especially high risk areas uh, uh, like floor of the mouth, ventral tongue or soft palate is another significant factor due to their rich vascular supply. Characteristics like uh, larger lesions and persistent over time also elevate the risk. In case of patient risk including tobacco use, alcohol consumption and immunocompromised status of the patient synergistically contribute to the transformation. Erythroplakia has high risk of uh, reoccurrence uh, primarily due to its association with uh, epithelial dysplasia and its predisposition for the malignant transformation. Removal of the lesion, persistent of etiological factors, field cancerization effects and uh, underlying monocular changes like persistent genetic mutations in P53 or other tumor suppressor genes predisposed to the occurrence of erythroplakia. Please scroll through the uh, this chart where I have provided the differential diagnosis for the various red lesions which may resemble erythroplakia. Thank you for watching the video on erythroplakia. I hope it provided a valuable insights into this important topic. If you found the video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to the channel for more updates. Feel free to leave your questions or feedback in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. So see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Have a nice day.